Hi friends, it's Monica and let's watch Shadow and Bone Season 1 Episode 6. Welcome back to my little reaction series that I have of Shadow and Bone Season 1, one year later. If you have not yet watched my previous reaction videos for Episodes 1 through 5, they will be linked down in the description box below. And fair warning, going ahead, there will be continuing spoilers for the season and all the books. Anyways, let's just get right into it. You smuggle Grisha out of my palace! I think this is the first time that we see the Darkling being really angry, especially with him seeing the consequences of having outside forces come in and ruin his plans. But I can help. Tell me how I can help. You already have. I think this is another side that of the Darkling we see of him being quite ruthless with his dark magic. Lena says it herself in this scene that she does not want to be anyone's captive again. And I do think she's finally understanding of, of her being played by the Darkling. And uh, this scene with Matthias and Nina, it reminds me of uh, Jack and Rose from the Titanic and... But I think in this case, they have magic to survive the storm. Maybe she wasn't abducted. Maybe she was rescued. Maybe she ran with them. And I think the Darkling here is just a little bit in disbelief of what Zoya is saying of Alina willingly escaping him and running away from the palace and I do think Zoya does have a little bit of jealousy here because they, the Darkling and Zoya used to have a little thing together but then all of a sudden Alina comes and captures the Darkling's attention because of her being the Sun Summoner. I shall relax when I have Alina and the dark claim rejects her and Zoya is not happy with that and how clearly the darkling is choosing Alina over her but I think in this case this just kind of shows why Zoya was provoking Alina <gasps> and we have um, Alina and Mal back together and again um, the directors or writers the emphasize of Mal and Alina holding hands. And I love the scene with Nina and Matthias. Put your clothes back on. Your wet clothes will be the death of you. And they're kind of talking about how the Fjordans prefer the woman to be more modest, while Nina is like the opposite of that. <laughs> and she's just being herself and a strong woman. And I love their banter here. And I love the scenario of like, they must keep warm and have to use their body heat and they obviously just came out of the ocean, the freezing ocean, and they need to preserve their body heat and survive the night. It's like the trope of having only one bed in the inn and obviously there's like a couple there and then they're like, oh no, it's only one bed, whatever shall we do? <laughs> Oi! Where have you been? I've been tracking you ever since you left the palace the night of the fate. And then Alina and Mal finally figure out that they never received each other's letters and obviously someone is um, intercepting them. And now Alina's realizing at this point how manipulative the Darkling is and doing whatever it takes to get the stag and get the amplifier power for himself. And I really do appreciate this tender moment between Alina and Mal because they are always looking for each other and trying to find each other when they are separated. So I really do like that. Is that a threat to return me to Helene? Either we get the target or Helene gets the Crow Club and Pekka gets whatever's left. And um, this is where Kaz and Edge are having an argument over whether Alina is truly a saint or something different but Cass still remains in his belief that she's just another Grisha and he also reveals that he has um kind of put up the crow club in favor of keeping Inej by his side is it me then do I escape? no 
and I think this particular moment between Mel and Alina shows they're being more clear of what their friendship means to them and solidifying how much they mean to each other even if with all the things that are happening that they still have each other's back and I love this little scene with um, Matthias and Nina like they're waking up next to each other and he's like well I didn't mean to cuddle Relax. with you this is where the Darkling is still on the hunt for Alina and um, they reach the village where the crows are and I really like how the next few scenes unfold so the crows and the Grisha with the Darkling they have their own little fights with each other and how in these following little scenes that we have they kind of showcase the talents of each crow that we have here like Inej, Kaz, and Jasper Throbs a bit, am I right? What are you? Big softy, apparently I really should have shot you in the head I love how Jesper does have some lines that he doesn't cross especially in front of that uh, kid so that shows that the crows are also human and they have their own limitations I'll take my knife back and here is kind of like a maybe a turning point for Anesh but I think also it's showing Anesh's final line of wish that if someone's threatening to come after her and like her friends who she probably considers family at this point she will do anything to protect them even becoming a little bit ruthless oh i really like this encounter with Cass and the darkling and of course this is something that they wrote in where is she that made the darkling pause again of hearing lena maybe made her choice in to leave him willingly. You should have stayed and cut it down. Mr. Brecker. And I love how Kaz uses like one of his tricks to get away from the Darkling. And the Darkling knows of Kaz anyways. The Darkling plays like the scary role really well. How much does he know? Could you find it without you? I pointed to a broad area on his map that's it and this is where alina realizes that she needs to get the stag before kirigan does and try to get that amplifier for herself and i think that's where mal doesn't understand how general kirigan does not want to destroy the fold but he wants to be the one to be the causing force behind it to actually be the one to destroy the fold instead of alina that's it isn't it you don't want to like a Grisha. You're scared. I still really like Matthias's dilemma within himself with considering liking a Grisha and him admitting that he does like her is like a turning point for him. And I love how like <laughs> Nina's like tickling him and they're like laughing and playing. But then we see here like there's a slight moment of fear in Nina because like she's almost about to fall down into this hole Matthias Elva Nina Zenik it kind of solidifies that maybe Matthias is being genuine in changing a bit changing his views on Grisha but more specifically only for Nina not really for every single other Grisha that's a pretty nice ride yes Indeed it is. And I really like the crows being themselves and just like, okay, we see an opportunity, we're gonna just take it. And they're stealing the Darkling's carriage. You don't need to put... Yes, David. Although David is under the command of the Darkling and he's quite loyal to the Darkling, um, I still like him for his like little quirky moments and him like raising up his hand. And then we find out here that they have a special tracking ring that they have put on Alina. The Darkling's like, okay, we have something over her. That's how he's lived for so long. Hmm. Alexander. He'll hunt me down. And he'll never stop. And I think this is where Mal realizes maybe they've got it a little bit more intimate than he first realized. But then Alina 
doesn't need to justify herself and like Mal reassures her that whatever happened happened and like she was in such a weird position because becoming like the most powerful person in the land and like the most revered person in the land to like save Ravka and the continent and all the people it leads you to do certain things you know I really like Mal and how he still doesn't blame Alina for whatever has happened and he will continue to protect her it does <laughs> it does go against like my love for the enemies to lovership so this is why i really love the dynamics between like the darkling and alina and comparing them to the dynamics of mal and alina no ordinary tracker no ordinary girl reunited adorable this is the last scene of the episode and we find out how the darkling figures out that Mal is also with Alina by this point and that Alina is going for the stag. He kind of mentions how Mal is a special tracker and how Alina and Mal are not so ordinary. So I do like how the Darkling is mentioning that in this little scene. So that was the end of episode 6 of season 1 of Shadow and Bone. I really liked this episode. It was more action-based, which I always appreciate. We also got more converging of like storylines, such that we get some interaction between the crows and the darkling. And we got the reunion of Mel and Alina, and how they're all going after the stag now. Well, except for the crows, but the darkling is hunting Mel and Alina down to try to get the stag before they do. So overall, this episode was a really nice build up to what is coming up next and that we're almost done season one already and there's only two more episodes left to go i'll see you in that next episode don't forget to give me a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and ring that with notification bell to not miss any future uploads i'll see y'all soon